afternoon and welcome to all members and guests and especially those who are being honored today. It is a great day to engage with the premier professional and community service organization in central Arkansas. We are the Rotary Club of Little Rock, known worldwide as Club 99. I'm Christina Bohaus, president of the club, and today we have a very meaningful program for you. On behalf of Little Rock Fire Chief Delphon Hubbard, we are pleased to celebrate our 29th annual Little Rock Fire Department Appreciation Awards. We are thrilled to be celebrating our local fire department on the heels of last week's National Fire Prevention Week. For those of you joining us for the first time, we want you to know that the Rotary Club of Little Rock includes over 300 members. We are people of action and we are one of over 33,000 clubs embracing over 1.2 million members worldwide. And we have as our motto, service above self. We will start our meeting today with the four-way test, prayer and pledge, to be led by Patricia Blick of the Quapaw Quarter Association, and then guest introductions to be led by Mary Baker of Baker Coaching and Consulting, followed by Debbie Davis of the Pain Centers of America, who will give us an update of members in the news. Plus, Jerry Damaro has a special update of a member in the news for us. So we will start with Patricia. Please stay standing. Thank you, President Christina. Please join me in the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? It will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Please join me in a special prayer. Bow your heads. Mighty God, you send your servants for every occasion. In your abundant love for humans, you have provided selfless civil servants who help to uphold and maintain your created order. Among these, Firefighters are among the most valiant and brave. They are a wonderful gift you have provided for society. Bless these heroes and keep them safe in their noble vocation that they may exhibit your sacrificial love day in and day out and go home safely to their families. Amen. And please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands.
because participating in the October dress project is a great way to look at your wardrobe differently as you have to get creative wearing the same thing for 31 days. It also helps her inspire creativity and cut down on consumerism. This week, we can expect partly cloudy skies with a chance of shower and thunderstorms. The rain should move out of here by Friday evening, and we can look forward to a sunny weekend with the high in the low 70s. And that's the news I think you know, need to know. Good afternoon, Rotarians and firefighters. Uh, we have uh, an event coming up that I want to talk to you a little bit, bit about. Uh, many of you that have been around in Club 99 for a while uh, will remember uh, Dr. J uh, James Freeberg. Uh, he was a biology professor at UA Little Rock, and uh, twice he took over as interim chancellor when the need arose. He, he loved UA Little Rock, and his students loved him. Uh, shortly before his death, uh, the, the Freeberg Award uh, was established at UA Little Rock, and he was, he was the first recipient. And the purpose of that award is to raise scholarship money for students pursuing a, a career in science and technology, STEM. And that award banquet has gone on every year since then, except last year when it had to be canceled because of, of COVID. Uh, this year, the... Uh, the, the honoree is another prominent <coughs> Rotarian, Carl Rosenbaum. You will recall Carl, of course, was president of Club 99. He was district governor and a very active Rotarian. Carl also received a license uh, from UAMS for a technology that eliminates uh, harmful food pathogens from, from food processing, you know, uh, salmonella and so forth. Uh, he put that license into a company, Safe Foods, and he built that company and today Safe Foods is the premier food safety uh, organization in the country located right here in the Little Rock area. So it's something very, uh, that he uh, has accomplished that, that I think we all need to be proud of what he has done. And it's a great example of, of how economic development can come from research at our, our universities. Uh, this year's event uh, is gonna take place a week from Thursday at Chenal Country Club. That's October 28th, uh, starts at six o'clock, lasts about a couple of hours. Uh, tickets are $75 and a table of, of 10 for $1,500. Uh, and if you're unable to make the event, uh, please feel free to make a contribution. Der my guest Derek Boyce sitting over here will be sitting outside uh, as you leave. So please uh, look up Derek and uh, buy a ticket, make a contribution as you're able. Uh, these, these students that receive these scholarships are the scientists and engineers of the future that are going to build businesses like Safe Foods. So they're very important, I think, to economic development here in our community. Uh, and most of the UA Little Rock grads stay here, so we kind of keep that economic development here in central Arkansas. Uh, and there's another reason, I think, to support this event. The leadership at UA Little Rock in, in my opinion, it today is outstanding. Uh, and I've been hanging around there for a while. And the two women that are, that are leading that institution are both Rotarians. Uh, uh, Christy Drail is a chancellor and Ann Bain is a provost. These women deserve, deserve our support because they are leading this university, in my opinion, on a new trajectory that we can all be proud of. So please consider uh, a contribution or buying a ticket or buying a table. Uh, stop by and see Derek on the way out. And after all, if we don't build Arkansas, who will? Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Jerry. And now for our main program. To begin, I'd like to thank some of today's sponsors, including our presenting sponsor, which is Arvest Bank. We'd also like to thank the generous support of McDonald's, McGeorge Contracting Company, Inc., Baptist Health, Hank Kelly of Kelly Commercial Part Partners, Greg Hatcher of the Hatcher Agency, the Little Rock Chamber of Commerce, and Snell Prosthetics. Please give them a round of applause. 
We are most grateful for their support as we pay tribute to our firefighters and personnel who are there for us around the clock. To, to uh, get things underway, I'm gonna bring up Molly McNulty, the chair of this year's awards. Thank you, President Christina, and good afternoon all. It's my privilege and honor for me to be here to help recognize some of our city's amazing firefighters who do everything from rush into burning buildings, saving the lives of people they've never met to teaching us all about fire safety. We are here today to acknowledge the men and women who are selflessly and courageously working for the city of Little Rock, protecting us for when things don't go as planned. We're grateful for their service and appreciate their dedication. To help us honor these exceptional people, I'm pleased to introduce the mayor of Little Rock, our fair, fellow Rotarian and Club 99er, Mayor Frank Scott, to say a few words regarding this important event. Mayor. Um, this is my third time having this opportunity uh, and each time it's a true blessing because uh, when I think about firefighters, not only as the mayor of the city, and we know how great guardians they are, um, but I'm a son of a firefighter and I know what it means to wonder whether or not you're from, in my case, my father is going to come home at night. It's also, you got to figure out what you're going to do because your dad's off for two days a week. So you want to make sure you don't get in too much trouble. But also, you realize how much family matters to a firefighter. Think about it. Holidays. They're waking up every day to protect each of us. Putting their lives on the line to ensure that we have a safe and secure city, but they also need love, admiration. And so for someone that spent a many Christmases and many Thanksgivings at station two, at station 20, I know personally what it means to have a firefighter. We, as residents of this great city, we have to understand that at any given moment, we could lose one. But at any given moment, we can save one. That is the essence of a firefighter. Mm -hmm. So on behalf of the city of Little Rock and the city board of directors, we say thank you to the men and women of the Little Rock Fire Department. Thank you, Mayor. I'm also pleased to recognize Vice Mayor Lance Hines, City Director Joan Adcock, and fellow Club 99 member, City Director Kathy Peck, who are all with us today. Thank you all. I'm also gonna take a point of personal privilege and recognize our 2020 Firefighter of the Year, Matthew Stallings, as he walked in today I said, congratulations. And he said, I didn't get this last year. So I wanted to specifically recognize him and um, say welcome and thank you for being here. Next, I'm proud to introduce the chief of the Little Rock Fire Department, Delphon Hubbard, and we'll invite him to the podium to share a few remarks. Chief Hubbard. Good afternoon. Uh, they put me on time constraints because I think this is the best profession in the world. It's not the best job, it's the best profession in the world. And I can go on and on talking about the appreciation I have for the job that the men and women of the Little Rock Fire Department provide to this city on a daily basis. So to all of the recipients and to even the firefighters back at the station viewing this, uh, via Zoom uh, from my office to you guys and women. We, you are greatly appreciated. You have great value uh, afforded to you through this administration. So I like to just start, I wrote out a few bullets and 
I want to make this day all about our firefighters. Uh, good afternoon to everyone in attendance and those who watching via for Zoom. I'm Dale Fon Hubbard, the fire chief of the Little Rock Fire Department. And on behalf of the men and women of this department, we'd like to thank the Rotary Club uh, of Little Rock and a special thanks to the club leaders. The fire department is most appreciative of the support this ex organization extends towards us each year. I would like to say congratulations to the recipients of the various awards that will be given out today. Many of our firefighters would say they were just doing their job, but yet this organization wanted to stop and say thank you and show, your appreci and show their appreciation towards the work that you do. Each day a firefighter puts on his uniform and leave home for work. They never think about saving a life. They never think about providing support for an emergency uh, medical scene. They never think about going into someone's home, changing out their smoke detector battery because it's chirping. They never think about caring for a scared infant while the mother is receiving first aid by some of their fellow workers. They never think about giving a coat or food to a less fortunate resident of this city during cold weather or providing a fire safety tip to children who happen to be passing by the fire station in need of air for their bicycles. No, we don't consider those things when we're preparing for work. It's called purpose. We are fortunate enough as firefighters to have a career where we fulfill our purpose in life. So I say to the recipients, today accept this acknowledgement as a huge expression of appreciation and gratitude for your purpose. Many of your fellow peers could have been here for the actions they've done, performed on a number of calls. However, this, this someone sought out to point out your actions so they considered you to be considered admirable for the work that you do. I once read, blessed are those that can give without remembering and receive without forgetting. Firefighters give of themselves on a daily basis and seldom remember many of the moments in the calls. Yet we are most grateful without forgetting how this organization, Club 99, show its support for public safety. So again, I say to the entire organization, thank you. To Mayor Scott, members of the board of directors, Director Peck, Director Hines, Director Adcock, thank you. Thank you for your considered all-time support of the Little Rock Fire Department. Thank you, Chief. In person here with us today, we will salute in a few minutes, a few noble award winners from the fire department. However, we also wanna take the time to honor virtually uh, some individuals. If you turn your attention to the screen, you will see the names of the performance service ribbon honorees this year. I just wanna take a second and let you uh, read those names. I'd also like to recognize the Little Rock firefighters and MEMS employees who received life savings awards this year. We also recognize those receiving the Citizen Life Savings and Good Samaritan awards this year. Their names are also displayed on the slides and we salute them for their bravery, courage, and instincts that have saved numerous lives. In moments of crisis, they are the ones that rose to the occasion and were able to save someone's life right here in our community. Bravo and thanks to these brave men and women. And let's give them a round of applause. Before I turn it over to Molly to present awards to our special guest today, I'd also like to mention some people who have received some distinguished awards this year, including the Alan Wayne Humanitarian Award, which was presented to firefighter Mandrel Howell in recognition for his work, creating a food assistance program to feed Little Rock families by using fire stations as meal pickup locations. We also recognize engineer Ronald Spivey, firefighter Damian Johnson, and firefighter Blake Hand for receiving medals of honor and individual citation awards for bravely 
calmly and quickly responding to a structure fire at a two-story apartment building for visually impaired people. Unit citations were awarded also to Unit 11, Engine 19, Truck 18, Battalion 11 B Shift, Engine 15, Engine 14, and Truck 15. And then firefighter Vanessa Lowe received an individual citation for her excellent care in responding to a vehicle incident while off duty. So let's give them a round of applause. And we also want to recognize the following four individuals who received something called Operational Excellent Awards. The first is Captain Casey Jones. He took on the brand new role of health and safety officer this year. Since then, he has navigated the fire department through a global pandemic. He created new physical fitness standards. He implemented incident stress debriefings after critical events and led two of the most physically fit recruit classes to date. In addition, he coordinated multiple health screenings for personnel, responded to alarms as the incident safety officer, and even developed a, something called a work hardening program to assist injured personnel back to duty. Captain Jones accomplished all of these tasks and programs while simultaneously building relationships with other city departments. He also created multiple opportunities for others to increase their physical and mental well being. Next, firefighter Stoney Iberg, he worked on both Christmas Eve and Christmas Day last year, helping cover staffing shortages. So his selfless act is an example of what sets the LRFD organization and personnel apart. Third is Division Chief Brad Jones. He has gone above and beyond in his role as the training division chief. From overseeing the completion of a recruit class during, COVID, during a COVID-19 mandated shutdown to developing and leading a hot skills training program. In addition, he initiated the implementation of a new professional development curriculum for the promotional process, yet continued to maintain high standards. This was despite constant administrative and operational challenges, including a $0 budget. He also worked with the Human Resource Office to create new hiring standards and practices, all in an effort to build a diverse, and capable workforce. His efforts put a breath of fresh air into the training position and encouraged personnel to embrace personal development. And then finally, Captain Brent Bufford, he excelled in his role as a training officer. From leading and teaching a recruit class of nearly 30 individuals through a shutdown, again, during COVID-19, to leading and scheduling a hot skills training program for over 400 personnel. And he has accomplished all of this almost solely with limited staffing and lack of assistance. If not for his efforts, his department would be understaffed and unprepared for serving our community. All of these men deserve special recognition. So our heartfelt congratulations to all. And as I transition to Molly, I also want to thank the following individuals and companies who have donated generously to this year's event. Ace Glass, Arkansas Business, the Arkansas Financial Group, Centennial Bank, Dennis Hunt, Merrill Lynch's Marquez Gibbs Group, North Shore Business Park, Dan Parker, VCC, and Alfred Williams. Let's give them a round of applause as well. And we're gonna transition now. I'm gonna have Molly come back up here and the chief and I are gonna navigate our way down to the floor and Molly's going to uh, give out the four special awards we have here. 
We're thrilled to once again honor the Little Rock Fire Department's Recruit of the Year. We're most grateful that this award is underwritten by BXS Insurance. Unfortunately, this year's honoree is unable to be here today, but please join me in giving a round of applause to the Little Rock Fire Department Recruit of the Year, Probationary Fighter Fighter Cole Spear. Congratulations to Firefighter Spear. We next honor this year's Medal of Merit Award winner. This honoree epitomizes compassion and forethought after E23 arrived and rescued a person who was choking. The patient's daughter, who was deaf, was performing CPR when the firefighters arrived. MIMS also arrived and E23 continued to treat the patient. The daughter, however, was very distraught and it was difficult to communicate with her. Captain John Robinson, whose wife, Deborah, who's also with us today, is hearing appeared and he was able to take the patient's daughter to another room and communicate with her, explaining everything that was going on, easing her fears and anxieties. Due to the skills and professionalism of Captain Robinson, he was able to make a positive impact in an otherwise very difficult situation. For that, we are proud to honor Captain John Robinson with the Medal of Merit Award. Captain Robinson, please join us. Our next award is the Marvin Bitten Bravery Medal. Marvin Bitten was a member of the Little Rock Fire Department from 1984, a birth year, to 1995. He was named Firefighter of the Year and received the city's Medal of Valor after a structure collapsed on him while he was responding to a fire. Although he sustained third degree burns to 33% of his body and was hospitalized for over two months, he has since trained thousands of citizens on fire safety and has written a book entitled The Unfallen Hero. This award winner reflects the spirit of Marvin Benton, and here's why. Engine three was dispatched with other companies to a man who was stuck in a tree. On arrival, E3 found a male patient hanging by a safety harness approximately 30 feet in the air. The man was working to trim tree limbs when his ladder broke and fell to the ground, leaving him suspended only by a safety harness. Due to the location of the tree and the debris around the tree, access was difficult. E3, along with crews from T15 and Rescue 2, used two different ground ladders to access the patient. Even with the two ground ladders in place, the patient was unable to reach either of the ladders from his position in the tree. Firefighter Shane Harold had to ascend to the top of the first ladder to assist the patient while he was reaching the second ladder. Firefighter Harold also had to assist the patient with freeing himself from the safety rope so he could climb down the ladder. The patient was physically exhausted from trying to self-rescue prior to the fire department's arrival. The patient had also complained of numbness in both arms and legs, making descending the, ladder, descending the ladder even more difficult. Although every possible safety measure was taken, both ladders were unstable due to the terrain and placement in the tree. However, firefighter Harold was undeterred by the risk. Working almost 30 feet in the air on an unstable ladder, Firefighter Shane Harold assisted the patient onto the ground. Firefighters' determination and quick action resulted in a positive outcome to this situation. The patient was treated on the scene for only minor injuries. 
Congratulations, Firefighter Shane Harold, for receiving this year's Martin Benton Bravery Award. You will also receive a $1,000 check for this honor. I'm now delighted to recognize the Little Rock Fire Department's Person of the Year Award. This year's recipient has been instrumental in the redesign of the fire department's communication program. Due, during internal communication center struggles, he immediately got to work on improvements to the dispatch process. He has overseen many rewrites of the communication division SOPs and the implementation of the mock alert system, as well as overseeing the hiring of new communication center staff. He spearheaded the writing of the RFQ for a new CAD system, tested CAD systems, and ultimately made the decision on what CAD system would benefit the LRFD the best. He has worked tirelessly on the new CAD launch for months on end, while also dealing with day-to-day -day operations and maintenance of mock alert, streetwise, and the old CAD. He played a vital role in the launch of the squad program and is currently working around the clock to grow the program with five additional squads. This past week, the fire department went live with the much anticipated launch of the new P1 CAD. The department notes, and I quote, this would not have been possible without us having our person of the year award winner, Alan Kate, on our team, end quote. For his hard work and steadfast efforts to continually improving the communication system, we are thrilled to honor the Little Rock Fire Department person of the year, Alan Kate. Congratulations again. The annual marquee award for the Little Rock Fire Department is the Firefighter of the Year. This award is sponsored by Delta Dental. In describing all this firefighter has done for the community, the department explained, Captain Roy Wirt is responsible for creating the Little Rock 9-11 Memorial Stair Climb in honor of all firefighters who were killed during the 2001 attack on the Twin Towers. Captain Wirt has also been able to bring together over 70 firefighters from Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, and North Dakota for the last two years to participate in this memorable event. He has also successfully obtained donations of approximately $8,000 and contributions to the Arkansas Firefighter Cancer Relief Network Trust Fund. He is committed to the recognition of the fallen first responders that we will never forget their selfless sacrifice. Captain Wirt has demonstrated the characteristics of a selfless servant who finds his reward in helping others. Captain Wirt is a true example of a public servant. Ladies and gentlemen and fellow Rotarians, we are honored to recognize Captain Roy Wirt as the Little Rock Fire Department Delta Dental 2021 Firefighter of the Year.
as fire, fire uh, excuse me, as Captain Ward is having his picture taken, I'd also like to note that he has received a watch that Sissy's Log Cabin has donated in recognition of his outstanding service and a thousand dollar check in appreciation for his incredible service to our city, state, and nation. Thank you. Thank you all again for being here today as we take a moment to recognize these exceptional public servants and leaders of our city's fire department. We are so appreciative for your service and sacrifice. Before turning it back to President Christina, I want to recognize the final group of sponsors who made today possible. Thanks to Ellen Cockrell, who's here with us today, Kutek Rock, Judge Kathy Compton, Judge Mary Spencer McGowan, also here with us today, and the Parish Delivery Services, who is also here. Thank you to all our sponsors who are with us for your generous support. I also want to thank Captain Casey Jones and Engineer Bo Hagar with the Little Rock Fire Department who were a huge help with today's award ceremony. Finally, I wanna recognize a special group of Club 99 members who worked hard to make this event come together. Jason Chaco, Natalie Gadotti, Jonathan Opitz, Kevin Newton, and Chris Duncan with a special note of recognition for Ted Jones, our Chair Emeritus. And of course, to President Christina, Executive Director Karen Fetzer and Lil Foster, we could not do it without y'all. I can't thank you enough for your guidance, support and assistance. With my deepest appreciation, I now turn it back to President Christina. Thank you, Molly. And we are delighted to announce that again this year, the Rotary Club of Little Rock in partnership, is in partnership with your neighborhood at McDonald's. We are presenting $10 gift cards from McDonald's to every Little Rock Fire Department employee and staff person. So we've given those to the chief to take back today. This is a token of appreciation for all the good work of our firefighters and their staff. We want you to know that your community supports you and appreciates you. So for today's award winners, again, congratulations. And to those who came both in person today or on Zoom, we are so grateful that you joined us today. And please let's do another round of applause for this very noble group. And just a just a final business note for our club members. Next week, we will be back here. Our program will be a special visit from our district governor, governor James Arbuckle. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is concluded. Please drive carefully and we are officially adjourned.